You would be absolutely correct. It was, and I have no idea why it would be. Anyways, let me start over. <laughs> because that was a couple minutes of muted talking. Uh, anyways. Yeah, thank you for dropping in. <laughs> I was wondering why I uh, was seeing a bunch of uh, test messages from me in the chat. Anyways. As I was saying before, uh, I'm going to do something a little differently today. Uh, we had a new rule set for uh, VGC drop in uh, about four days ago. Oh, okay, I understand. Yes, uh, Ichi is going to be doing a stream tomorrow. I am assuming it's that old Xbox game you've been talking about on Facebook. Or, no, it's Final Fantasy. What am I talking about? Right, there's an update tomorrow, isn't there? Yeah, okay. That makes sense. Anyways, yeah, so uh, new rule set means uh, new team build because I need to work uh, the new rules into everything. So rather than uh, just kind of do it on my own and uh, just kind of try and have it built for stream, I'm going to do a little bit of a team building exercise uh, today. Probably going to build more than one team because there's more than one of the uh, new restricted Pokemon that I would like to use. Uh, in this scenario, as I guess I should probably explain this one. So... It should be the right one. No. So long story short, the new rule set involves uh, basically the same stuff so far from Series 7, but uh, in Series 8, we have the ability to use certain restricted Pokemon, i.e. Uh, box legendaries, uh, Pokemon that usually are entirely banned, are now limited to one per team. So... We're all looking at uh, potentially, well, all of the above here on screen are now legal, but you're only allowed to have one. And then you got to build a team around it, basically. Or just have it be there for to be an absolute threat in and of itself. That means we got Mewtwo, Lugia, Ho-Oh, Kyogre, Groudon, Rayquaza, Dialga, Palkia, Giratina, both forms, Reshiram, Zekrom, Qrem and both of its fused forms. Xerneas, Eveltal, Zygarde, Cosmog, Cosmom, Solgaleo, Lunala, Necrozma, both fused forms of Necrozma, uh, Zacian, Zamazenta, Eternatus, and Calyrex, and both of Calyrex's fused forms with the two horses. So, some of these are incredibly disgusting. Now, the obvious limitation here is that Sword and Shield does not have Megas, which means that uh, Groudon and uh, Kyogre don't have their Primals. There's no Mega Rayquaza. Uh, the du the Duskmane and Dawnwings Necrozmas, since there's no Zed Stones, can't uh, use their ultimate form. But there's still a little bit of playroom here. Uh, above all else... A lot of people are already building with Kyogre, I've noticed. Uh, I've seen a little bit of Dialga pop up. Xerneas, I think, is good if you give him the right team to back him up, and I think I'm going to try that. Uh, Zygarde could be ridiculous, but I feel like with the way some of this uh, meta goes, maybe, maybe not. Uh... I've, I definitely want to try making a Zacian team, and I think I'm going to run uh, Shadow Rider Calyrex as well. So, above all else, I think I'm going to build here a Kyogre team, a Dialga team, a Xerneas team, and a Zacian team, and a Calyrex team. So, I'm probably building five teams today. I don't know if I'm going to get the whole way through that. 
And then there's going to be a little bit of work put in building these, obviously, in-game, because I do breed all of my stuff, so there's going to be a lot of work potentially off-screen. Maybe on-screen I might do a little bit of uh, prep and breeding on-stream just as a hangout option, but uh, we'll see. Anyways, uh, just because I think it's probably the most interesting of all of them right now... Let's start with Xerneas. Um, Item-wise, I'm not sure what to give him. Doesn't have a hidden ability to swap to, so it's definitely just Fairy Aura. And it does boost Fairy moves and under it. Uh, just because I'm not entirely sure what looking at power oh yeah because geomancy okay now i got that yep yep geomancy is the good play here because it boosts the hell out of all of his stats so giving him the power herb so he can do it in a single turn is definitely the option here yeah so let's just give that geomancy right out of the gate which basically raises his special attack, special defense, and speed by two stages. And if he's using Power Herb, he gets it all in one turn, and then he can just start going to town. Um, I feel like Dazzling Gleam is definitely a good option on him, but what's everyone else using? Yeah, Dazzling Gleam and Moon Blast are the two options. Wow, nobody's running coverage on him, huh? Just... The vast majority of people are just running pure fairy moves because of the uh because of his effect the fairy aura boosting fairy moves they give him geomancy to power up protect for a little bit of uh viability and defensive just in case dazzling gleam and moon blast so he has both a double target and a single target depending on the situation Definitely like giving him Dazzling Gleam and Protect in this scenario. Moon Blast. I understand why Moon Blast. But I feel like I don't like the option of not giving him some coverage. Depending on the situation, he's going to get absolutely boned by a Steel type. I think the biggest issue is probably going to be Zacian. Sword, of course. Yeah, he's just running Iron Hit. Running Rusted Sword and not. Hold up. Hey, Wiggle, how you doing tonight, man? Okay. Stuck at work doing something uh, not so fun, I guess. Almost done everything. Okay. Bye. Behemoth Blade. Have Iron Head while the Rusted Sword is attached. Okay, I've never actually used him long enough to know that that's how, where that move came from. I thought he just knew it. Okay. So yeah, I feel like if I'm running Xerneas, the biggest issue is going to be the Sam.
We got no info, huh? I guess the item doesn't do much other than upgrade him. Is the stats different between these forms? Yeah, of course they are. And he's faster. Okay. And stronger. Oh no, I got that. I'm uh, actually currently building myself a team around Xerneas. I just think that for the most part, he's... Uh, Zasan teams are probably going to be the absolute bane of this. Because it'll be the thing that's just popping in and trying to attack. And one big steel attack and it's uh it's not so looking so good. It is fairy steel. Definitely. So I'm thinking of running, uh, running uh, Xerneas with uh, Indeedy or Clefairy anyway, just to give it uh, a follow me so it can get its uh, Geomancy off turn one. So trying to think, I feel like with the Clefairy, I don't think the Clefairy survives Behemoth Blade. <laughs> I, I somehow doubt the Eviolite Clefairy survives that, but I could be wrong. I'll check that out in a second. Um, thinking, yeah, okay, so some, if he gets fire, ground, fire, ground, or anything neutral, fire and ground would be preferable. Let's go with the default set for now. Has no moves. Behemoth Blade. Yeah, it might, but I severely doubt that. Whereas, Indeedy, at very least... Like, Clefairy needs the Eviolite to be any good. But, at least with Indeedy, I could drop the uh, Focus Sash on it again and guarantee it survive and take both enemy hits. But, yeah, okay, so that's... Okay, but there's no EVs in here, so let's just... Go with that Zacian 252 and 252. At very least, because it's going to max that out. Yeah, the Duralidon's also a thing, especially with that... I can't, I can't redirect them, so... Something to deal... I mean, at very least, how fast is Xerneas? Not very, but is it faster than Duraludon? Let's see, what do we got? Do we got any other coverage options? Oh, yeah, yeah, that, that one. Yeah, that, I think that's the matchup where I absolutely try. Yeah, I think more, more often than not. Mm. I think more often than not with Duraludon, you see either Life Orb or Assault Fest. So, one way or the other, that thing's going to be a pain. I feel like that's the matchup where I need something else to play instead of Xerneas. But, Xerneas really doesn't have a whole lot of good options. Hmm. 
Hmm. So, not sure how well this would go, but... And hear me out. Misty Explosion. If you can get the Geomancy off... Get yourself boosted, and the opponent switches in something dangerous... Or just right up front, turn one, if the opponent uh, pulls something else. Swap into uh, Hapu Fini. Or just pull out Hapu Fini in the first place. Misty Terrain. Misty Explosion. And then just do a lot of damage because Xerneas boosts the power of fairy moves. It would be a hell of a unexpected moment. Yeah. It'd be a hell of a uh, unexpected moment because who's going to expect you drop... Who's going to expect that you pull out your restricted and you immediately just make it explode? <laughs> and that's going to be a really damaging uh, Misty Explosion. Not only with that thing's base power, being a stab, and with Fairy Aura boosting its damage and potentially, potentially sitting on a Geomancy already working. Mmm. Mmm, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I really like that. Uh, but back to this damage calculation. So, if I don't Dynamax, what's the set it's running here? The Xerneas is running in the Picolytic set. Timid. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, this is a. Timid Xerneas with full investment to special attack and speed with a little like the four extra points in defense. As long as he's not Dynamax, lives well, potentially gets one shot by the Behemoth Blade, but only if it crits. However, if I were to Dynamax. It's literally the same chance, okay. And, well, I mean, actually, I should be taking something into account that I'm not. That Zacian enters the field with a plus one to its attack. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I realize. So that Zacian definitely one-shot Xerneas. That Zacian definitely, definitely outspeeds. Definitely outspeeds the Xerneas, and then one-shots it. So that's, I think, the big matchup to watch out for. Let's just check Dr Duraludon 2 on this one. Uh, Geomancy boosts special attack, special defense, and speed. So if I can get the Geomancy off, and it's two stages to all of the above. So if I can get the uh, Geomancy off without getting one shot, yep, two stages each. That's why that's a damn good move. Yeah, charges that charges for a turn... And then raises special attacks, special defense, and speed by two stages. That's what the power herb's for, because it's a two-turn charge-up. Power herb turns it into a one-turn charge-up, and as long as I've got the follow me going, and I'm not, didn't get Duraludon. Yeah, it does. 100% it does. Yeah, so I still don't have an option for taking out 
because Ossian at that point. Uh, the Duraludon. The Duraludon in general? What if I maxed out the Deed IV on that? Okay. The Duraludon 100%. Oh, Steel Beam? Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's, for a moment, swap out Flash Cannon for Steel Beam. Oh, yeah, the Steel Beam absolutely murders him in a single shot. So, hear me out, though. So even if you maxed out the Duraludon speed and I mean, maybe if he has a choice, maybe if he's scarfed, yeah, if he's scarfed, he might outspeed, but the vast majority of people are not running a scarf Duraludon. It's mostly Assault Vest and Life Orb to maximize that damage. Actually, just in case on that, just for the maximum damage calculation, give him the life orb. That's going to hit like a truck. Yeah, but I outspeed and I'll hit the geo, get the geomancy going and. Yeah, it's real high cost, so most people will be using the flash cannon. The steel beam is like on the off chance, but. We're checking maximum damage output. So yeah, if I get the Geomancy... Hey, update VGC! Thank you for the follow! Yeah, I'm building a I'm building a Xerneas team right now. I'm just considering my options. Like I literally just started <laughs> this team build. So all I've got so far is Xerneas, and I'm just wondering if there was like he had any coverage options and what the damage calcs are like against the major threats. Like, especially worried about the Duraludon, but in most cases, I'm going to outspeed the Duraludon, and Geomancy will make it so this, even a Steel Beam won't kill it. Which will give me a second turn to do something, but... Yeah, I know. I was far more worried about Azacian. That was the first damage calculation, but Duraludon... Duraludon's more of the worry right here, just even if it's just a, even if it's not a common thing, because I'm looking at running it next to a follow me and Didi, just to be able to get that uh, Geomancy off turn one. So, uh, I don't think it gets Earth Power. Well, Sun Team. Yeah. Yeah, that. With the number of uh, non-meta things I've I've been facing again the latter lately, I uh, definitely want to be prepped. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah, no, Sun getting like Torkoal out on the field also, and. Maybe having Charizard sitting in the wings. Yeah, that definitely deals with the steel types. Looking at this. Xerneas versus the Duraludon. The Moonblast is like almost KO. Well, let me just actually. Yeah, if, I, if I'm going turn two and Geomancy's gone off. Dazzling Gleam kills the Duraludon. So, not actually worried about the drought i mean the partner might be an issue well the partner wouldn't be an issue it would the follow me would still go i'm more worried about the drought on uh 
more worried about having the Duraludon go pat, just ignore the follow me. Yeah, fair enough. That too. I'm more wondering, like, in the case of trying to set it up turn one, if I pair it up with a follow me Pokemon and it takes attacks. So I'm just worried about uh, Duraldon's capability of ignoring follow me and any other redirects. So if it survives Duraludon, but Zacian just absolutely murders it. No ifs, ands, or buts on that. But if I get the follow me off... I definitely get my Geomancy going, but then I, if my Follow Me Pokemon is gone, the, the Zacian is going to just absolutely destroy. So I don't know if it's worth even sending him out against Zacian at that point. Maybe it's saving him for late game and hoping Torkoal and Sun Pokemon could take it out. Anyways. Yeah, after an Intimidate, maybe. Because he already... Xerneas already kind of, with the EV set that I've got here, already just survives Behemoth Blade before the plus one. But it's that plus one from uh, Zacian's uh, ability that is the problem. So yeah, maybe if after my uh, Follow Me Pokemon dies bring out something with Intimidate. Which easy choice either... I mean, if I'm running Sun anyway, Incineroar's not a bad cover coverage option for all of this either. So Incineroar on this team with Intimidate probably do some good damage. Put in some work. All right, I think I got a good idea. Oh, and uh, yeah, I, I still support the Misty Explosion strat too. The Dazzling Gleam basically OHKOing the Duraludon is, uh, makes me mighty happy. And also, after getting the uh, Geomancy off, chances are I'm probably Dynamaxing the Xerneas anyways. So that's a uh, max power, that's a uh, high power uh, max Starfall right there. Even the Misty Explosion turning into the Max Starfall. And setting the terrain for him. So I definitely, if I'm doing this, I definitely want either... Either a Misty Surge uh, Weezing or... Probably more Tapu Fini at this point. Yeah, because we both kind of sat here and thought about how funny it would be to drop a Geomancy boosted Misty Explosion with Fairy Aura up out of nowhere on a Xerneas. Just as the, well, fuck you button. Depending on the situation, I could do it more safely than others. Now that's another question. Just on the off chance that I'm just going to end up shredding my own Pokemon doing it. Let's go straight to the standard set. <laughs> yeah, just because it would be kind of funny and kind of unexpected to have the restricted Mon on the team suddenly just boost itself and then explode. <laughs> just just as an option. Alright, so Tapu Fini, standard set. Give the Xerneas the Misty Explosion. Oh yeah, no, Misty Explosion 100%. Well, it's definitely up Misty Terrain. Fairy Aura is up. Oh, yeah. No. That. Wow. 
that Misty Explosion actually would just one-shot Tapu Fini from full health. <laughs> oh, 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 I'd need to tweak the Fini a little bit to survive that. I mean, what if if I didn't have... Yeah, okay. If this is a turn one, not Geomancy boosted Misty Explosion, yeah, yeah, Tapu Fini will survive it, no problem, with a little bit of damage if I just swap her into it. Yeah. Just focus her more defense, maybe? I mean, if I maximize that uh, special defense EV even more so. Run it a little more defensive, maybe a little more support Tapu Fini than the usual set going around. That would be a good amount of fun. And then just throw some sun support going on in the background too. Alright, I'm liking this set. This This sounds like a good team right here. So the usual Xerneas, yeah, everybody's running, maximizing its speed and special attack so it can outspeed some targets. And... Yeah, even if it isn't good, it'll be hilarious to watch. Yeah. Just considering it, because if I'm trying to maximize damage, I mean, he gets the double, the two-point boost at a Geomancy anyway. So having him a little bulkier is probably for the better. I think some physical defense is probably uh, called for. You're running maximum HP... Weight defense, four special attack, 36 special defense, 108 speed, modest. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Gives it some decent bulk. The nature boosts its special attack. So you get like the four pity points into it. And just give it some speed. Yeah. No, that makes sense. I like that build. It actually sounds pretty good. So yeah, let's just pull on in into its HP. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah, that's a good calculation to have. Yeah, if you can outspeed Regieleki, you're pretty good. I guess that's 108. Some special attack. 36 points into the special defense. And another, and that last one, eight into speed. That also helps out because, well, I mean, the only way he gets outspeeded by most things at that point is if the opponent drops Tailwind. Which is entirely, entirely likely because I've seen a lot of tornadoes pop up right now, so... And in that case, he's still doubling his own speed with Geomancy, so he's kind of keeping up with most of them. Yeah. I mean, that would be lovely if turn one, I just pop out with this and I get surprise trick room <laughs> from the opponent. Just like, well, <laughs> there goes that. But, yeah. All right. Yeah, that builds look pretty good right there. Give it high, yeah, maximum IV spread and all of the above. All right, I'm liking that. Let's just bring out the Indeedy. The Focus Sash, because I want to uh, 
be able to survive both enemy attacks, no matter what they might be. Psychic Surge to mess up the opponent's priority moves. And definitely... Follow me immediately. I hate how Smogon lists its moves. Expanding force. Smogon lists its Yeah. Well, Smogon is not what I meant. I mean, it's uh, Showdown. Is more what I thought. It's just showdown lists its moves by smog on rule set. So, like, all the moves that are super useful in doubles are all just listed as usually useless. And I'm like, well, fuck yourselves. And aside from that... I think my current NDD is rocking Heal Pulse. Just for that extra bit of support. Protect isn't, like, fully required, because in the vast majority of cases, this NDD is there to die on turn one. Right? That is the opposite of what I want to do with those EVs. Hmm. Now, I basically, I'm just using an NDD I already have for this one. Because I already made myself two. I don't need another. So, lifting its EV values isn't going to do much for me other than make other than have a poke paste for it later but uh let's just double check what my dd's ev spread is i think i remember but oh yep yeah. want pull into its hp pull into its special attack Last four points into its defense. Nature is quiet. And it's got zero speed IV. Switch down. All right. That's uh, the same NDD I've been using with my Snorlax combo. Same idea, so... Chances are, most times, it's just going to take two hits. It's going to sit there. The Psychic Surge is going to prevent the opponent from uh, doing most any priority stuff to mess me up. No fake out. No nothing. And then the Focus Sash, it's probably going to die turn one to two really big hits. But it'll give Xerneas the chance he needs to pull the Geomancy off without taking any damage. And if for some unknown reason NDD survives, it can drop the Helping Hand to boost damage further on in priority. It can expanding force if I feel like it will actually get an attack off. And if it really has a lot of health and I think it can pull it off, I can heal pulse Xerneas and, uh, if something went wrong. Or just for standard help with anything else I end up using it with. And now the crux of that Misty Explosion strategy. Definitely for now, go with the Leftovers Misty Surge. 
We're talking more. <laughs> right? There's these three Pokemon. This is the team. I agree with the uh, previous commentary from Update VGC. I think uh, Sun, a little bit of a Sun Core also on the team will do wonders. So at very least, Torkoal. And I think Torkoal, Incineroar to get the Intimidate to mess with Zacian a bit. And he can also cover me on some other things, because the Darkest Lariat will uh, will deal with Calyrex pretty well. No, I, I think you've given me a pretty good idea so far. I, I think I know exactly what I'm doing with the rest of this at this point. I'm thinking, aside from the Tapu Fini, which I need from a Misty Explosion strat, I'm thinking Torkoal, Weather Ball, Venusaur, and Incineroar. Because under the sun, chlorophyll, double speed Venusaur can do some uh, stuff. And if I Dynamax the Venusaur, well, Weather Ball is a fire attack. So whether I Dynamax it or not, my Ven Venusaur also learns Earth Power as a major thing. So Zacian don't like ground moves either. I got some options. So I know what I want, what I was probably doing here, but let's see how everyone else feenies. Moonblast, muddy water, calm mind. Okay. Also gets ice beam. Heal Pulse, eh, if I'm running this more support purposes, anyway. Heal Pulse may be a good option to have, just so I have that second uh, heal. Well, mine's not a bad option on it. Jack up its special defense a little, raise its special attack, especially if I'm running it a little tankier. Hey, Armor Hide, how you doing, man? Yeah, so definitely the single target. Um, and I think, I think, aside from the moon blast. Oh, you got a package coming in? Ooh, what specifically? Take that calm mind for now. Actually, I got a lot of fairy going on already. Do I really want to use the moon blast, or did I want to go something else? Maybe just the muddy water instead as its major attack option. Unless I want to drop protect. Hmm. Mecha from the fourth Battle Strike team series. Ooh. All right. That sounds cool. Trying not to kill his teammates, though. Maybe... I do like Scald. Hmm. 
in muddy water is a bit lower accuracy, but it's got that chance to lower accuracy. And that does absolutely nothing about. All right, Wiggle. See you later, man. What lower accuracy? Good chance of it missing. Potentially lowers the opponent's accuracy, but it, I know that doesn't do anything to Dynamax Pokemon because they can't miss. Got Scald, though. Especially with the chance to burn. I like Scald better. I'm going to build him tanky, so I don't know if I mind him being minus protect just to get the extra little bit of coverage going. But we'll see. Mm. Yeah, I definitely want to make him a little more rounded, so tank tanky uh, Tapu Fini. Max out the HP. What natures are people using? Mostly modest. Well, I'm going tanky, so... Don't know if I... feel like I need to dump. Might drop, might want to drop a little bit into a special attack, though. That's what Calm Mind's for. Maybe, maybe not. I feel like I just go all in on his physical defense. And then just use it, and then drop another four into special defense. And then give him special defense boosting nature. So it's up special defense, down physical attack is calm. Okay. Yeah, that about balances out his defense. That about balances out Tabuki's defense stats. Boost uh, the HP value to a good amount. I feel like that's good for tank Tapu Fini. With leftovers on top of that. Alright. May revisit that. We'll see how the... Uh, See how things go. If anything, I might drop the Moon Blast for Protect later. It's great to have the coverage option just in case. Especially with Xerneas on the team. With boosting that too, but... There's a lot... Xerneas has a lot of fairy power behind it already, so... Anyways, let's... Bring out the Torkoal. This is the Turkle Drought. Definitely eruption. Heck. Heat wave for when he starts taking damage and eruption isn't quite as worth it anymore. And my usual response here with him would be solar beam.
gives him under the sun more of a chance to deal with water types and some other stuff, but what's everybody else doing right now? Earth power. All right. Okay. Can dig that. Why Earth Power? I mean, I get it's a good move, and if it, in some ridiculous chance you decide to Dynamax the Torkoal, you can just, A, well, I mean, if you want to Dynamax the Torkoal to reset the sun after he's already out, you don't have anything to switch between. Earth Power would give you a max Quake, boost the special defense stats, which, always good to have, but... Is there something in particular that Earth Power is countering? Probably. I mean, if I've got Venusaur going on this team as well, I don't necessarily need the Solar Beam anyways. And giving him Earth Power for when the Sun is inevitably taken out by... Just about anything ain't a bad option. I mean, Gyro Ball, but I make my Torkoal as slow as all hell, so I'm gonna give it some damage as well. Give him a Steel Move to boost defense as well, in case of Dynamax. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just going to go with Earth Power. I feel like the majority of people who are uh, playing right now, there's some sort of counter that that's... Uh, there's some sort of counter is the reason people are playing that. There has to be, even if I don't quite understand it just yet. Alright, so where's my Torkoal? What was his, I, his EV set already? Because... I know I already have one built, and yeah, no, that sounds about right. Maximum HP, maximum special attack. Where's that last bit? So it's special defense. And he is. Quiet. Yep. It's going to be the G Max. Because in cases of maybe Dynamaxing him, I do like that better. because I don't have one on this team yet. There's Power Orb, Focus Sash, Leftovers, Charcoal. Life Orb on Venusaur is good, because he's got mostly attacks. It's going to be... The Drain. Earth Power. Actually, Weather Ball's not all that strong, but it would give me some co some different coverage options with Torkoal on the field. 
first and foremost, let's just, yeah, the sludge bomb is just kind of a godsend on Venusaur. And so usually I'd sit here and go, sleep powder, just that really fast chance to put something to sleep. Weather Ball's not all that strong, but if Dynamax, I mean, even without being Dynamax, it gives a hell of an option to just give him a fire attack under the sun. And if they set, if they bring up the sandstorm, he's got to rock move. If they bring out rain, he's got a water move. Hail, he's got an ice move. Just give him nice coverage options all around. Hmm. Let's see. How are other people running this just for options? Leaf Storm Sleep Powder. Oh, not many people are running Weather Ball. Like, at all. That's a really low percentage. Okay. I mean, Leaf Storm I get. Especially if you're Dynamaxing. It's just a really powerful option. That still sets off his, uh... All of his little bonuses. Leaf Storm probably also KOs Kyogre more than a Giga Drain does. And Groudon. That's probably why. Damage calculation. Yeah, Venusaur. Not that Chlorophyll matters in this in the damage calculation, but. Let's see. The ogre. Picolytic set. What's the usual? Leaf store. Ah, oh, yep, that's the one. Mm -hmm. That's her. Both of the above are dino. Oh, wow. If both of the above are dynamaxed. And the max overgrowth doesn't do a whole lot, honestly. Still more damage than I had. So that's a thing. It was a guaranteed two hit, two hit kill. And I'm pretty sure, yeah, Torkoal underspeeds Kyogre, so as long as I can keep the weather shenanigans going, then Venusaur 100%. Heck, even without the sun, Venusaur outspeeds Kyogre. Kyogre's Max Hailstorm will two-hit uh, Venusaur, but Max Overgrowth will two-hit him first. Okay. Dynamax. That's why it's Leaf Storm, because that's a barely an OHKO. If they were to pull out Groudon, Leaf Storm is a pretty guaranteed kill. Including if we're dyna both Dynamaxed? Nope. If we're both Dynamaxed, under the sun, Groudon is most certainly going to kill. But I outspeed him, so I'll at least get that massive hit in for about 70% of its, of its uh, HP immediately. We're not talking max overgrowth here. This is a G Max Venusaur, so it'll also be the uh 
I could. Yeah. Then he survives it. But he survives it but without the life orb. Yeah, that's still a that's still a two hit kill there. But once again, the part of that point was the Kyogre. Who now I'm doing considerably less to. And I feel like Kyogre is going to be a lot more common. Yeah, I think Kyogre is going to be a lot more common in the meta this time around. Groudon, great for great for a Sun team maybe, but I feel like Torkoal still kind of the better setter in most cases, just because he's a lot slower and he has better chance of getting priority for weather. Instead of Giga Drain, we're going to go with Leaf Storm, because that's a good idea. Earth Power for the Max Wake, Sludge Bomb for the Max Ooze, as well as Stab. And just Sleep Powder for the last move. I'd say... Give that option of outspeeding and putting something... Actually, that's the other option. For Groudon, I can either go all in and hit him for all that damage, or I can just run out, or I can just try and outspeed him, which I'm going to, because he's setting the very thing that makes him faster, and just go for Sleep Powder. Chance putting the thing to sleep. Special attack, max speed to guarantee he's moving first. And then those last pity points are in his HP. I was pretty sure it is timid. Yep. One fifty nine. Okay. I'm going to go back to the thing here. Oh. Huh. All right. That's fair enough, I suppose. Let's see. If I were to do that, if I were to go HP value 159, and dump. Oh, you mean make the actual HP value? Okay, I gotcha, I gotcha. Oh. 
Okay. Let's see. For now, get rid of that. Twelve, nope. Fifteen, nope. Twenty, nope. Four, that's probably twenty-eight. Yeah, there it is. Twenty-eight EV points. And then dump all the rest in special attack. Just gotta rework my uh that's 28 and 228, okay. So that's 28. Yeah, and Leaf Storm still murders the thing. Gives me just slightly more HP. Murders the thing still on Dynamax. Doesn't really change my damage calculations at all. Hmm. All right. Got to rework the EVs on that thing a little bit, which is fine. It's easy enough. I've already got the thing bred. I just need to reset it with some arm right. Okay. So with that Venusaur, last Pokemon on the team is going to be Incineroar. I believe that is usually... Biggie Berry. Intimidate. Definitely need the Lariat. Flare Blitz. I like U Turn and Cineroar. Oh, yeah, yeah. Throat chop. Okay. Yeah, with Incineroar, I definitely want Protect on him, but... Okay. Yeah, yeah. I could stop it from happening, but most Pokemon using Snarl are going to outspeed Incineroar pretty handily, right? And so I can think about that. Oh, main mod using Snarl is Incineroar. Yeah, no, oh, that's definitely an option. Speaking of parting shot, <laughs> uh, maybe instead of U-turn. Because if I've already got Parting Shot anyway... Oh, right, Fake Out. Jeez, what am I even thinking? You are correct, sir. Nice catch. Fake Out, Parting Shot, Flare Blitz... Okay. Just looking at Lariat versus Throat Chop damage-wise. 
just five sh throat shops, just like slightly, slightly weaker. But does prevent snarl from happening. It's definitely a thing. And Darkest Lariat's bonus, aside from its damage, is that it just ignores all the defensive boosts, too. Do a little more damage that way. Which... And then again, I don't see, I don't know how many defensive boosts uh, most of the things you're using Darkest Lariat on are going to be using. Mm, definitely want the Flare Blitz, because if I'm taking advantage of the sunlight, ooh, that stab Flare Blitz under the sun is going to do damage. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, that's about sounds about right. So yeah, yeah, mainly Ferrothorn and Reggie Steel. Yeah, Flare Blitz is just kind of gonna wreck most of that. Well, that's fine. Not to mention Torkoal. Yeah, especially under the sun, they're not going to last very long. Alrighty. That brings me to that. Which, once again, I turn to the wisdom of the masses. What are most people... Noticing the citrus berry instead of the figgy berry. Not sure of the point there. Most people are running in careful right now. Is it? Hmm. I mean, I know it goes off sooner, but... I mean, they did nerf the... Oh. Yeah. No, and he'd know. He knows his... He does his damage calculations. He knows pretty well. Meanwhile, a citrus berry will recover you from half HP. Alright. Most people are running him careful, which is special defense. Yeah. Make him a little tankier. So he survives some stuff. Already there. Yeah. Uh, well, there's definitely a build here that people are using that's uh, decently high on the speed. Though they've absolutely sacrificed their attack power, though. So not a lot of these are running attack power. Hmm. That one's got a little bit of it. Not much. I guess all these people have decided a tank here in Cineroar is better than a strong one. Which I get. Got to be able to survive a little bit to to do his work. A lot of people. I'm seeing a lot of one sixteen kicking around. The general consensus it appears to be two forty four for the HP. Speed, I'm seeing 116. Yes, 116 is what I keep seeing. So if I want to... Okay, what's the speed value that gives them? 116 brings them up to 95. Well, wow. brings them up to 95 speed. That ain't fast, but... If I were to say... Uh, 
do anything, so 124, no. Hit it. Yes. 124. Barely outspeeds the other Incineroars. Leaves me with 140. Is not a great split for remaining EVs. Seeing 76 and 76 over here with 4 into its attack power. But I'm minus a couple, so I think that's more. One hundred and forty points remaining. They're usually split between defense, special defense, and then a little bit tossed into Oh, that guy did two thirty six, that's why. I feel like I gotta drop that value to make this a little better. Yeah, 200 is better. That's probably why that's values there and right now. Okay. That gives me 148. I think I can pretty safely here. A lot of people are going 76 and 76. I think that's 72, 72, and then 4 into the attack. It's probably... That feels like it might be wasted EVs. People are running 76. That's the 120 defense. If I. Yeah, that just drops it down. That's just wasted EVs at that point. 68. Yes. 64. Yeah, that goes up some. So. 68 is probably the better number here. 68. Sacrifices a little bit of what those people are doing, but it also gets me put 12 points into my attack power. Don't know if that's dead IVs or not. No, actually 12 is pretty good. Okay. 12 is a good number in this scenario. Okay. I think that's an Incineroar. Throat Chop, Flare Blitz, Fake Out, Parting Shot. Sacrificed a little bit of the defense on that compared to some other people, but realistically, I'm just shy one point of defense, one point of special defense. Not sure if the, that one point matters hugely in any matchup, but this is probably as good as I'm getting it. Alrighty. So, with that, we're going to call that Arrhenius Sun. Yeah, Xerneas um, is a good thing to call that for a label. And that Should be good. Alrighty. Uh, Alright. So let's... Because I said that I was going to do multiple tonight. Because I got a couple of these things I want to put together. This one... Probably going to be my Zacian theme. Uh, 
maybe in, in a couple of cases here i usually find that uh showdown and uh ranked online vgc ranked online in the actual game is usually two very very different experiences so i don't know if showdown like i don't personally feel showdown's the best test but I'd honestly, I would have no issue just breeding this team out. Most of these Pokemon I already have. I just have to adjust their uh, EVs a little bit. So I don't have any issue with just off-screen going in and uh, building that team in my game. I just want to get a couple teams cracked off and figured out so I can just make a couple options. So, um, obviously, Behemoth Blade, no reason not to. I already pointed out the reason for, uh... Yeah, I get you there. Like, I mean, I spend a lot of time doing Ranked Ladder for streams. I mean, not as much in the last couple months as I did when I first started, but I'm trying to get back to it. Uh... So, having the team in-game is definitely just... helps out. <laughs> but yeah, no, I just do a lot of breeding. It's kind of a cathartic thing for me. I just kind of do a lot of it. So, just because I've never actually seen Zacian run. Because, obviously, this is a new thing. Close combat, play rough. That sounds right. Gives fighting stat fighting move is always really powerful. Behemoth Blade and Play Rough as stabs and then protect just in case. I I understand the argument for putting Sacred Sword instead of close combat because you don't always want the stat drop. But in the case of Mm, I mean, he's all high speed anyway, so. There's, hold up, there, there's a one, there's like a 0.1% of people running him with Adrenaline Orb. That's kind of hilarious, actually. That's kind of funny, because you know he's going to get countered <laughs> with something with Intimidate. Hell, that was the entire point of the Incineroar on my last team. <laughs> Gavin Mike. Oh, is that the name of the guy who did that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. That makes sense. Somebody, somebody somewhere, just like, if I'm going to get intimidated anyway, might as well boost the speed. <laughs> I, I, sh I, I should look into him then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I get that. <laughs> okay. Well, in this scenario, I'm just going to go with the masses on this one. Most people, yeah, Jolly makes sense. You want him to be a little faster because he's essentially a not quite. I mean, he's pretty fat. He is pretty fast, but. I want to give him that extra added edge. Oh, all right. Just of the Picolytics page with the 0.1% on it. Yeah, okay. Sounds about right. And I'm assuming... Wow, there's... Wow, okay. This is uh, such a new thing that they don't even have an EV set for them. But... I'm going to outright assume that the EV spread is just kind of this. Because <laughs> the whole point of Zacian at this point is outspeed overpower 
one shot as many things as possible before it goes down. And I'd probably just dump that four points into his HP. Yeah, just to get that one extra HP point. Special defense is better. Yeah, he's going to be facing a lot of fire, isn't he? Oh, okay. Is that how download works? I always thought it was just random. Huh. So it just downloads based on uh, the lowest defensive stat on the other side. All right. Hmm. I always thought that was just random and you were just, when you went to a match, it was a coin toss. That's good to know. Fair enough. All right, so that looks like a good build for him. I think the obvious play here. GMAX, yeah, because you don't have, yeah, no, GMAX Lapras boosts the defensive values going, yeah. It's not like Zacian's getting Dynamaxed, so. But I'm thinking right now, Frankster Tornadus to be able to set Tailwind as well. Just for that added little bit of speed control, just in case. Uh... Oh, okay. Yeah, especially with. Especially when Zacian's uh, major weakness here is Sun Teams. G-Max Lapras can come in, bolster defense, and set uh, Rain instead. So that makes a lot of sense, actually, as a combo. So G-Max Lapras, yeah, I'll probably throw that onto this team pretty easy. Uh, so I haven't actually built my Tornadus yet, even though I have meant to so frequently here. Uh, Focus Sash, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Mostly running it for, yeah, priority Tailwind, priority Taunt, Hurricane as an option, and Protect. I mean, I get why Hurricane, but I don't... I mean, mostly it's probably got Hurricane because most people are running it with Kyogre. Just, yeah. Because that just makes it 100%. And, I mean, if I'm running this team with a G-Max Lapras, Hurricane's not the worst option either. But I always just hate. I mean, Rain Dance ain't bad either. Hmm. This is an option. Rain Dance just to screw over fire types as well. It isn't a terrible idea. Just priority Rain Dance, drop that power, drop the firepower. Probably less expected option out of the Tornadus, too. Okay. But yeah, first and foremost, Sashit, Prankster, Tailwind, and Taunt for sure. Now... Part of me usually prefers to go Air Slash instead of Hurricane. 
just because of the accuracy issue. Outside of rain, hurricane only having a 70% accuracy, it, 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 it doesn't hit frequently enough for me to like it outside of rain. But if I'm also... But if I'm dropping Protect for Rain Dance. Then Hurricane's probably the option. Yeah, I'm going to be adding Lapras. I'm going to have Rain Dance on the Tornadus. Rain's going to be up semi -freq pretty frequently on this team. And even if I come up against a Kyogre team. Whoop, they did it for me. Uh... Yeah, having the Hurricanes pretty good. And I think I will take that Rain Dance instead of Protect just to be able to get that going. You see the EV spreads. Alrighty, we got mostly Timid. So it breaks the speed tie with other uh, with other pl with other priority moves. Makes sense. Bolstering its speed and its special attack so that hurricane will hit like a truck. This guy... Sacrif oh, I mean, that's a lot less popular builds. Sacrificing its speed stat for a little bit of special defense instead. And a little more speed. That's more of a tanky build, though. You build him so he's semi-fast, but he's tanky. I'm running him Sash, so I don't think I'm as worried about that. The tank build is probably the same guys who run Mental Herb, so that he can't be uh, taunted off first turn. No, I think I prefer the Sash build, so just fast and strong. Fast. High special attack. HP. I mean, in this case, Porygon 2 is already getting the the regular attack boost, so I'm not too worried. So I think HP is fine. Make it timid. Make it faster. That looks like a pretty good one. And we will Emax Lapras. Okay, we talking life orb or are we talking scream? Yeah, I think so too. Fair enough. I think shell armor is usually my go-to. Though in this case, when I'm trying to set rain, hydration ain't terrible. When part of the point of Lapras and Tornadus is getting rain up in most cases. Water absorb? Yeah, recovering a little bit of HP. I mean, that's true also. I don't know if we're so worried about the, like I know originally when at the beginning of at the beginning of Gen Eight, shell armor was like the most popular thing, but that was mostly because Togekiss. I, okay. Don't know what that notification was for, but all right. Apparently I'm following myself now. 
I'm I'm assuming Ichi is testing things in the background. <laughs> Anyways. Uh that's fine, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, no. Water absorb probably is for the better. Definitely gives me an option. Huh. Weird. But anyways, yeah, you're probably right. With a lot of Kyogre and Rain teams kicking around in the meta right now, Water Absorb is probably the option. We're not as worried about uh, Togekiss just super lucking its way through everything or any of the other high, uh, high crit uh, mons, so that's fine. What is the move set comment? Oh, most people are running light play right now. Okay, that's good Good to know. Yeah, freeze dry, definitely. Thunder. Yep. Yep. So you're going to be dynamaxing it all the time anyway. That's pretty good to have. And if you're setting up rain with him, that's even better to have. Ooh. Mm, you're asking the real questions here. Oh, yep. Well, let's uh, get the obvious thing right now. Freeze dry as my ice option, just to give me option, because that'll be super effective damage against Kyogre anyway. So if I'm sitting here using water absorb, taking hits and healing for it, kind of nerfing his water attacks, freeze dry does some good damage. Also just makes for a nice ice attack to have. Hydro Pump, just for the extra damage. Especially with, uh, once again, Dynamaxing all the time, so... Yeah. Zacian can do... Zacian's pretty quick and does a lot of damage. Tornadus is there to make sure that any major threats... To him, like any like support monster that could be putting him to sleep, could be drawing his attention away, could be doing whatever. As long as it's not in Didi. If it's in Didi, that uh, priority taunt's going to be absolutely worthless. But... Hydro Pump, yeah. A lot of this team is probably just going to be fast KOs, so I don't know if Parish Song is the option. Though, potentially here, just having it as a backup option in case shit goes south isn't exactly a bad option. Though, with freeze dry, I'm not exactly worried about water types doing super effective stab damage with that. So thunder is yeah, freeze dry covers a lot of those options too because it'll super effective flying types anyway because it's an ice move. It'll super effective water types because that's what the move does. Slight chance to freeze. Though in a scenario where uh, an opponent's using a Mungus, the electric terrain being set up prevents Spore from doing anything. So having that as an option on this team is also an idea. Yeah. I think I'm just going to take the Thunder. K 
count on the quick KOs. Be looking for most play here. Most people, well, that's uh, not high numbers on any of these builds, but most people are running him modest. Because as you said, he kind of struggles with damage. But other than that, he just kind of tanks a lot. So, running him modest just to bolster that damage makes sense. High HP, high special attack, the half decent speed. Or slightly lower, maximize lower HP, lower speed, maximize the special attack, and just pump some more into the defenses. Make it just a tad tankier. Make it a tad tankier in the defense value while sacrificing HP. That's the question. I feel like it's better just to give him HP, though. Just to balance things out. What is his defenses like? The special defense is definitely the higher one already. Mm, his HP is already really good, so... Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking that first one actually looks like a good set. Two two one nine six two two eight. Yeah, I think that looks good. Where do we go with this team from here? What's the biggest issue? I mean, Zacian's biggest issue in the first place is sun and potentially some ground. Lapras definitely deals with the sun, guys. Tornadus is my speed control button. Mm. What it all what's big in the meta? Let, let's just see. What's the highest in use stuff right now? Incineroar, Regilecki, Boom, Urshifu. Landorus. Well. I mean, you're not wrong. Though in this scenario... I mean, if I'm setting up rain anyway... For the most part. Or do I go... Do I go Urshifu? I mean... Yeah, that's what I'm... What I've been thinking. It struggles with sun and fire types, but we've already dealt with that with Lapras. So I'm not as concerned about that right now. He's also weak to ground. But I don't know if there's any big threatening ground types kicking around. I mean, except for maybe... Maybe, uh... Groudon. But... Yeah. Regilecki would kind of walk in and screw me a bit.
Yeah. Glad to know the Reg the uh, Landris set hasn't changed at all. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, Regielecki pops in, outspeeds almost everything. Except maybe the Tailwind will kind of mess him up, but unless he has his own Tailwind behind him. But most people send out Regielecki to support, not be the major offensive. Gets the screens up. Landorus can mess him up. I'm not worried about Landorus myself, because Lapras... He also just kind of messes up Incineroar, which is, once again, top of the charts. So yeah, not the worst option in the world. Urshifu kind of struggles against him as well, but I've also got Tornadus for that. But yeah, let's... Uh, Landorus does kind of cover a lot of ground here. Let's say Assault Fest right now. Don't know if that actually helps him survive a big ice move, but actually, that I'm curious on that one. I doubt very much he survives a big ice move, especially from Kyogre. Yeah, no. <laughs> That ice, the origin pulse, everything that Kyogre has one shots Landorus. <laughs> That's not even a question. Uh, I mean the max. I mean he survives the max hailstorm. I mean, yeah, I'm setting up rain, so yeah, the geysers are gonna murder him. Yeah. But still, at that point, the Max Geysers in the rain still kill Landorus, guaranteed. He'll survive the Max Hailstorm. But, I mean, that's if the Kyogre decides to mess up his, uh, mess up his rain. Which I doubt he's doing unless he thinks that's an absolute benefit to him. But yeah, no, Landorus can definitely be used to deal with the Regieleki. He can. A lot of people use Regieleki with Kyogre. So, not sure. The Kyo... If the Kyogre murders Landorus, uh. Also, oof. Standard set Landorus is slower than Kyogre, so Kyogre's definitely going first. That's a problem. I mean, what happens if I... If I Jolly instead? I mean, if I Jolly, then yeah, he still... Now he outspeeds Kyogre, but that's barely... And that's if Kyogre's not also using a speed nature, which most people aren't, but sure it happens. Well, just for now, let's just throw Landris in here. Rock slide. U turn. It's an assault vest, no point to protect. So it is U turn and fly or bounce. Which one was it again? Pretty sure it's fly. Yeah, it's fly. It 
Jolly to help it outspeed things. More people run it jolly, but most people who are running it are running it adamant with these. Like the biggest, the most common thing is to make it adamant. But a lot of people are running it jolly, and I think I agree with that. What are these values? Massive HP. For survivability sake, obviously. And most of his other stats go between his attack and his speed with a little bit pumped into his special defense and defense. Hmm. That's if he was people are only doing that when adamant, because the adamant nature is boosting the attack anyway, so they can afford to drop it a little bit. Everyone who runs him jolly is just max speed, max physical attack, and then just either HP or special defense. I don't know if it's worthwhile to go for the survivability if he's still not surviving his, mass his major issues. Like, anything with a big ice attack could still one-shot him, even with that, so I don't know if the survivability is worth it versus the outspeed. So if I'm setting up, though Tornadus is here setting up Tailwind, so Landorus has a decent chance of outspeeding a lot of things in that scenario. So that's not a bad option. I think I flipped those. More attack, a little bit into his HP. A little bit into his defenses. Not, well, I want to maximize his speed still, I think. I want him to be able to do stuff even if Tailwind's gone. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna max the speed, max the attack, and his. prefer taking that extra point of HP in this scenario. The extra special defense isn't going to stop anything. Hang on a moment. That's a slight problem. I just had a little bit of a notification pop up on my computer that I don't like the look of, so I just kind of have to deal with that quickly. Better. <laughs> had a sudden, uh, had a sudden, uh, your space is filling up on your hard drive notification there. And I'm currently recording this also as I stream it. So, kind of don't want to lose that. So, I kind of had to deal with that real quick. Anyways. 
get the Lando going right there. All right, so what else here? Um, I need a trick room counter. I think, especially with that, all my stuff being pretty high speed, aside from Lapras. Amungus! Ooh, ooh, I like that. I really like that. Just that extra layer of support. Put some guys to sleep. Ooh, ooh, good call. I do like me some Amungus. What do we got here? Most people running the Koba Berry. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. It really does. From flying attacks. Yeah. It's a lot of those. Uh, what else? Then Sash I'm already using. The Yash Berry, not a lot of people are using. I mean, Koba Berry makes sense. Yes, Among Us. Hey. <laughs> I mean, there's already that, there's definitely that artwork of uh, every single uh, crewmate in an Among Us game just being an Among Us. I've seen that. I mean, Koba Berry I get. I usually like running Black Sludge on him. Just to give him that turn by turn uh, survivability, but but yeah, no. If I'm redirecting stuff with rage powder, then definitely the Koba Berry is going to take a lot of max air. He's going to take a lot of max air streams probably, which is going to murder him outright really quickly if that makes sense uh, well. this is this is the thing that I argue with people about all of the time most people tend to run regenerator I don't like Regenerator on him. I really don't. Hey, Itchy, if you're still around uh, watching in the background, can you uh, ban that bot? <laughs> Or armor hide. I don't know if I I feel like you have mod privileges, but I may be wrong. To do
Oh, man. I don't actually know how to ban that bot myself, unfortunately. <laughs> like, ah. Well, I'm just going to give up right now. I don't know how to do any of that. Anyways. <laughs> I personally, especially in VGC, where there's not a lot of switch out, I don't like regenerating because it just feels like a waste of the ability slot, whereas effects for... I mean, if I'm rage powdering you and you're hitting them with a physical attack, well... I know it's a random status effect, but it's stat it's a status effect. Let's see. Definitely want. I hate that it puts rage powder in here as a usually useless move. Rage powder spore. Yeah. No, I get it. I understand why regenerator. Like, I understand the whole, you want to be able to use Spore, and if the opponent attacks first and gets a different status effect, you waste your turn. But the argument can also be made, if you know that the guy is going, if a physical attacker is going to be hitting Among Us, don't Spore him. Or maybe just go for the special attacker instead. There are safer ways to do it, but... Hey, Overkill! Welcome to the stream, man. Layman, welcome aboard as well. Oh. There's the resubscribe from Overkill. And she is a party of nine people, huh? Oh, boy. You get to see, you get to see me web browser stream today. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, apparently. Uh, let's see here. A lot of people protect and clear smog. I mean, I guess. Oh yeah, yeah. All the all of that. Thank you. I was literally going through my own settings a minute ago, trying to figure out how to ban the guy, and I just did not know how. <laughs> So thank you for jumping on that immediately after getting here. <laughs> uh, a lot of people running clear smog this time around. I mean, I get why, but... Stab move, and it clears away uh, stat boost. Instead of just using pollen puff or sludge bomb. Well, I do like Pollen Puff, just for the fact that it you it's an attack and potentially a heal for your teammates. But the ability, yeah, no, the ability to uh, stab attack and at the same time uh, remove all of an opponent's setup is definitely a bonus. Especially in this meta. I think I'll take that alright. It's a good idea on their part. Alright. What are these guys running? Most of these people are running sassy. What's, a, what's sassy again? Negative speed. Up special defense. Yeah. Yeah. I guess, yeah, you just run him with the zero speed IV, preferably. So he uh, moves very fast in Trick Room. Uh, 
capacity, but what was my among us? Because I already have one. I mean, I can always mint it later, but, you know. What's mine already? It is... I'm currently running Calm, which isn't a bad option. Obviously, a lot of people are doing that. Dabby dooby doo, uh, yeah, no, nah, no. Nah. No need to unban the bot that was advertising. That's, uh, certainly a thing. Um, it's a low percentage usage, but the IV spread is there. I do like Kong as a thing for this one. Not that I mind. Yeah, special defense down attack, so it's still the same. Except Stassi just makes him better in case of Trick Room. A lot of people are also running Relax. That's just defense, right? Yeah, that's duck defense. Hmm. Check with the calm, look at you, no, it's a negative. Click their name in chat and click on the... Oh. Oh, it's just that easy, huh? Well, now I know. I keep going into mod view and looking for the option, and I never find it. So I'm like, oh, well, now I know. Anyways, a lot of people are going for relax to boost its defensive value, which is a little lower than special defense. So I guess, yeah, balance, that, balance its stats out. Oh man, I wonder why you can't ban Overkill. Maybe because he's a mod. <laughs> like, perhaps because he's a moderator and you are not. <laughs> oh man. Anyways, yeah, I think I will change it up. Make mine relaxed. Bolster that defense a little bit. Maximum HP and then spread into defense and special defense makes perfect sense. So, yeah, 250 maxed out HP. 156 and 100. Okay. Six. Boom. That more or less balances out his defensive stats, gives him maximum. Koba Berry gives them more survivability against flying moves, which there's a lot of. Effect Spore come in nice for that. Spore to put things to sleep. Rage Powder to redirect attacks. Clear Smog. Great support there. And then Tornadus is just sitting there to, uh, to Tailwind and Taunt and get all that done. All right, so who is the last Pokemon for this team? Landris kind of covers the Intimidate. Zacian, Landris are physical. Yeah. Yeah, so a dark type is definitely a good thing here. So, hey, remember when I was saying, hey, maybe Urshifu? Hey, maybe Urshifu. <laughs> Dark Urshifu would be able to, uh, I believe Dark Urshifu with its uh, Wicked Blow can just completely decimate Metagross. And I mean, I'm kind of lacking in, like, dark types right now. 
And especially with uh, Shadow Rider Calyrex running around, or just Calyrex in general running around. Urshifu with Tailwind behind him can just wreck a lot of that. Yeah. Urshifu would give me a bunch of options. I mean, Zastian's already got the fighting move, so it's not like I gain a fighting stab out of that, but I gain the wicked blow in and of itself, and the ability to just kind of go through protect is pretty godly in, a, in and of itself. And it would give me an excuse to actually build that Dark Urshifu that I've had sitting in my box for ages, so... I think... Regular Urshifu or G-Max? Do I make him G-Max just cause, or do I just go for the regular? Yeah, the option to go through, yeah, no, that's definitely, doesn't help me very much, and if the guy is sitting on a defiant Pokemon or a competitive Pokemon, then I just kind of get blown out of the water for doing it, whereas G-Max Urshifu can go through Max Guard. Yeah. I don't think, in most cases, I don't think I'm maxing Urshifu on this team. I think Lapras is pretty solidly just the Dynamax here. But... Just in case is more of the point. Because Zacian's definitely not Dynamaxing, because he can't. Tornadus is more there for support, so Dynamaxing him would kind of mess me up a little bit, unless I really wanted to just lean into the max airstreams. Lapras is the choice, so is the absolute choice for the Dynamax. If he's coming out, you're, you, I'm Dynamaxing him. Lando. Yeah, Landorus is pretty good in and of itself. The option for Dynamaxing him is there in certain situations, but. All right. Later, Dabby Dooby Doo. Have a good night. And just more for the option. Like, I don't think I'd be Dynamaxing Urshifu very often unless I'm staring down a Dynamax Metagross. Like, if the guy is pulling a weakness policy Dynamax Metagross, then not a lot of anything else I have is going to deal with it. But the Dynamax, but the G-Max Urshifu would be, like, my only real option for countering that. So I feel like just having the ability to go into the G-Max is definitely a thing here. So, G-Max, I believe, is the option. Now, let's just, before I do anything else, damage calculations, see how this plays out. Urshifu, G-Max, Speak set. The other side, Metagross, Speak most common set. Yeah, wow, okay. Just regular, out of the gate, Wicked Blow just ends Metagross if we're not Dynamaxed. 
And that's if, yeah, that's if I'm running Jolly, which I probably am. And if we Dynamax the Metagross, but not the Urshifu, Wicked Blow is good. Wicked Blow still deals 63% of the thing's HP. Jesus. Okay. Yeah. Blow in a Max Quake ends this thing pretty easy, I think. But just in that case, if I did Gigantamax... Actually, man. G-Max 1 Blow, uh... G-Max 1 Blow here isn't going to kill unless I crit. Hmm. Huh. Well, I mean, I have no item on this thing right now. It's the usual thing here. I remember someone saying black glass. Oh, yep, there it is. <laughs> I remember someone saying the words last season during series seven. Black glass is Urshifu. The Metagross counter. It just kind of ceases to exist. Oh, Solgaleo? Yeah. Probably a good idea. Linux most common set. Wow. <laughs> well, I mean, Solgaleo can't doesn't really have anything to do against Urshifu at that point, and Urshifu's uh, doing most of its health at that point. That that basically puts it into Solgaleo, a uh, one blow, and basically anything else just destroys it. So instead of just the Soul Galeo, let's Dawn Wings, there it is. Not oh, Dawn Wings is I thought Dawn Wings was the Soul Galeo. Dustman, that's the one. That's a lot less damage. That is a lot less damage, actually. Jeez, okay. I mean, still half its health versus, you know, it doing maybe 36% 42 on a crit. That's, once again, if Dynamax. If I don't Dynamax... Oh, yeah. If neither are Dynamax, then Wicked Blow does like 85% of its health. And it's Sunsteel Strike. Wow. Yeah. A little over half of Urshifu's health at that point. It's because it's Psychic Steel, I guess. I mean, yeah, it's the same as. Alright. So, yeah, against. Uh... Duskmane, or uh, Solgaleo, or Metagross, Urshifu's kind of my best bet. If I run the Black Glasses one, anyway. That plus all the massive amount of support build in this... Uh... Because Lapras already has my life orb. You have Bolt Fest. Yeah, I think the black glasses are. Let's see. 
pissed. Fucking for sure, wicked blow right up front. No questions asked. Next, series eight. Uh, a lot of people are going choice ban too. And I lose all my options, and there's no point putting detect on it if I'm running choice ban. Uh, yeah, black glasses is like a 1% thing here, so. Poison jab at that point? Maybe. Combat. Go that damage calc again. Okay, if I'm running instead a choice band. No, not going to outdo it. Because the band is completely useless once it's dynamaxed. Okay, yeah, that's why, right? I forgot about that. It no longer gets that boost. Whereas the black glasses would give it that boost and give it that extra damage. So the black glasses are definitely probably the better play in this scenario where I'm pretty sure at that point in those certain in those situations that I really need him for, Urshifu needs to be able to Dynamax, and without the item and without that boost, well, Combat, Wicked Blow, uh, not Protect, I want Detect on that one, actually. Just in case I come up with him, come up against something with Imprisoned, and... Sucker Punch is definitely an option here, just to give it some priority last hit. It's either that or Poison Jab, and I don't think I need Poison Jab. I think giving a half-dead Urshifu the chance to uh, outspeed something and just smack it down with Sucker Punch is probably for the best. Especially boosted by the Black Glasses. Eight, Urshifu. What is Jolly? Yeah, that's what I figured. Max attack, max speed, Jolly, four HP. Make sure it's as fast as it can possibly go, as hard as it can possibly hit, and. Yeah, there ain't nothing changing that outcome with a Porygon 2. So, HP just for the extra survivability. Uh, not that it matters, but... Drop dead special attack. Alrighty. That looks like a damn good team. There's also a lot of legendaries on that team. Oh boy. Turned into a uh, quite the thing. Well, this one's Asian offense. All right.
And with that, it's been, wow, it's been two and a half hours. <laughs> Just like that, I got two teams uh, designed. Two very different teams, two very different purposes behind them. And yeah, I'm going to get to building both of these things. Yeah, that's coming. <laughs> not tonight, not tonight I ain't, but uh, this is definitely coming. I got to build these teams first. Okay, well, thank you guys for showing up. Update BGC. Thank you very much for sitting in on this. You have been a great help on this one. It's been great to bounce ideas back and forth with you. Uh, D Dave, thank you so much for the raid as always. Thank you everybody from his stream who stuck around. Layman, whoever else was there, because not a lot of other people aside from Dabby Dooby Doo uh, actually said anything. But yeah. Yeah, it's been great having you. I uh, might do this again soon. Uh, Saturday at night is my next stream. I think I'm playing League of Legends with Overkill that night, so who knows? I'm going to spend some time off-camera building uh, these teams, and probably Thursday night stream, I'll probably be running one or both on the ranked ladder. So... Thank you all very much for coming out. I'm going to have up. Have up. There we go. Let's see who is available for rating right now. Oh, not a lot of people still streaming. Um. Uh, Gurvy's on right now. He's only got one guy in his chat right now, so let's show him a little love. Uh, my thing shows full metal at two, so I'm just I'm giving it to Gurvy. All right. Thank you guys all again for coming out. It's been a good stream, very productive for team building for me. And uh, I will see you guys around. And we're going to be raiding uh, D2 Gurvy, uh, another stream on member. Uh, he's currently playing Destiny 2. Thank you all for coming out. Peace.